Hi there, everyone. This is Ms. Rick Felder talking to you today about the distributive property and how it applies to the greatest common factor. Really quickly, I'd like you to pause your video so that you can actually set your paper up in your composition notebook just like this. You should always be on the right-hand side of the page when you're starting a new video. So go ahead and go to your next blank page that has the right-hand side free, and you're going to write distributive property with GCF. You're going to write video in the top left corner, and on the top right, you're going to write 6.ns.4. So that's how you're going to start. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the standard itself. So the standard itself is talking about greatest common factor, least common multiple, which we've already discussed. And now we're going to talk about what we're going to use today. I'm going to use colors, so you should too here. And I want you to write in these different colors. Um, it doesn't matter which color you use. You just want to be able to differentiate between the different pieces of this. So we are going to use the distributive property. So that's in one color because that's how we're going to get there. And then we're going to use the distributive property to express a sum of two whole numbers, 1 to 100, with a common factor, because that's where we're starting. So we're saying that the problem is already set up so that the common factor is inside of the numbers. And then we're going to actually change that so that it's, it's expressed as a multiple of a sum of two whole numbers with no common factor. So now I'm going to use my purple here because notice we wrote a sum of two whole numbers, one to 100 with a common factor. Well, that's this 36 plus eight. So 36 plus eight is the first part of that standard there when it's talking about a sum of two whole numbers with a common factor. That's what the 36 plus eight is. And now we're going to use that so that we can write what's here in pink. Now it says we're gonna change that to a multiple of a sum of two whole numbers with no common factor. That no common factor is what's really important here. So what we're saying is, is that that nine plus two right here has no common factor. And then we bring out the common factor, the greatest common factor. So now we have four and then nine plus two. So go ahead and copy that those pieces down now so you wanna write everything that you see underlined and you wanna use different colors so that they match everything that you're using here. And now you can see I just threw that my write this down here on the left hand side. So you just wanna make sure that you're writing everything down that I've underlined. Now you don't need to write the entire standard. You're just writing the part that says use the distributive property to express a sum of two whole numbers, one to 100 with a common factor as a multiple of a sum of two whole numbers with no common factor. And then for example, so that whole chunk is what you're writing down, okay? And now we're gonna go ahead and look at how to do that. So first, before we dive into the standard, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the distributive property actually states. So the first thing we need to talk about is what property means. Property is going to be, um, those are the statements that are true for any number. So you want to go ahead and pause the video and write that down now. So now I have a visual here of the distributive property. So you want to copy this down. I would prefer it if you used color. That would actually be very helpful for you. So what we're looking at here is the distributive property written with letters. And you want to remember when two letters are written next to each other with no spaces in between, that means to multiply. So what we're looking at is A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC, where A, B, and C are any real numbers. So if you look just to the right of that, you'll see the little um, A being distributed to the B and to the C. Sorry, that's my phone. To the B and to the C. So now you have AB plus AC. So you want to go ahead and copy this portion down on your notes, and then I'm going to go to the next slide, but you don't need to go to the next page unless you're out of room. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and go to the next page. You don't need to go to a new page in your book. You just need to make sure that you write this down, and I do want you to write all of the instructions down for this first one as well. It says, use the distributive property to write the expression as a sum of two whole numbers with a common factor as a multiple of a sum of two whole numbers with no common factor. So basically, all of that verbiage just means that you're going to go from this side of the distributive property, which is what we're going to be starting with right there, to this side of the distributive property, which is what we're going to end with. So you can add this to your notes here. So in green, I'm adding that this is our starting point. And now in red, I'm going to add that this is our ending point. And that's basically all those instructions are saying. You want to go ahead and add that. So that's really all those instructions are saying, is that we need to take it from 99 plus 27, and we need to pull out whatever the greatest common factor is. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing that you're going to do is to find the greatest common factor of the numbers that you're given. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the ladder method. So the numbers that we're given are 99 and 27. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up on my ladder. 
So I've done that over here to the right. You see 99 and 27, and then I've written the L. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to change colors so that you can see. Remember, we're going to start with the lowest prime number that you can pull out of both of them. So the first lowest prime number we're going to look at is 2. I know that I can't take 2 out of 99 and 27 because they're both odd numbers. So I'm going to go on to 3. I'm going to check and see, can I take 3 out of both of those? So yes, I can. And now I'm going to kind of... Um, get through this a little quicker because this was in the last video. So then we get 33 right here and we get nine right here and you can still take some more out. So let's go ahead and draw another piece to our ladder. We're gonna pull out another three. We get 11 here and we get three here and we are all set here because we can't take anything out of three or 11. So now we're going to identify our greatest common factor and remember, our greatest common factor can be found by multiplying anything that's on the left-hand side of our ladder. So that's the 3 times 3. So now you can see where I wrote that 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And so now we're going to go on to step 2. All right, so step 2 you want to write down. It says replace each original number by a product of the GCF and its other factor. What? what? Let's talk about our translation here because that's all in math speak. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our original number, which was 99, and then we're going to replace 99 with whatever we've divided out that um, greatest common factor. So what's 99 divided by 9? We get 11. Now, if you've used the ladder method, you can use the numbers that are on the bottom of your ladder, and that's what you're going to see here. So let me show you that. Now I'm showing you with colors so that you can see where everything came from. So now we have 99 plus 27, that's what we started with. I'm gonna switch back to blue now, and I'm gonna pull out my greatest common factor, which is the nine, and then I'm gonna multiply nine times 11, because nine times 11 would give me 99. So you need to make sure that on both sides it's the same. So in blue I have 99, and nine times 11 is equal to 99. I'm also going to copy the plus sign because that's in the, between my 99 and 27, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with 27. So I have to think to myself, nine times what? So we know it's gonna be a nine times, and it's gonna be nine times three is what gives us 27. And again, just a little cheat, you can see here that you have the 11 here, and you have the three here. So those are the numbers that are actually gonna be the other factor when we're talking about this other factor right here. So now you've done the second step. So now you're gonna see that we need to place the greatest common factor on the outside of the parentheses, so that's the nine. So we went ahead and put that on the outside there, set up our parentheses, and then we're gonna go ahead and just put over, put what the leftover factors were, so that's the 11 plus the three, and we're gonna put that inside the parentheses. So then your final problem would look like this, 99 plus 27 is equal to nine times 11 plus three. Now just to go ahead and bring it back to the standard really quickly, let's go ahead and go back here. When you look at this, you can see in the standard where it says, that last part, it says a multiple of a sum of two whole numbers with no common factor. So that's exactly what we did. We went ahead and now we have two whole numbers, that's the 11 and the three, and then they have no common factor because we pulled out their common factor, the greatest one, of nine. So this is the end of this problem. All right, so the last piece I'd like you to do is it's going to go ahead and we're going to, it's going to be your turn now. So I've written three problems down. You don't want to write all three problems down. You just want to write the first one down. And then I'd like you to go ahead and factor it out just like we've been doing. And I went ahead and put the directions up here in the top right for you. You don't need to write the directions. The ones that I just put up there use the distributive property. This is just to remind you what to do for these problems. So when you come back to class, we're going to be looking over your notes and we're going to check those three problems. Good luck and make sure to check online or your online textbook if you have questions about the distributive property.